Spiritual insensitivity. We should continually develop our intimate relationship with God, not allowing our hearts to grow cold and insensitive toward our Heavenly Father, our families, and our fellow believers. Here now is Gene Getz. Now, taking you into uh, Genesis chapter 26, uh, there in verse 23, and following we read, From there he, Isaac, went up to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him that night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you. I will multiply your offspring. Why? Because of my servant Abraham. Because of my promise to him. And so Isaac responded, built an altar there, worshiped the Lord, pitched his tent there, and Isaac's slaves also dug a well there. Now if you look at the context of this whole paragraph, you will see that God just blessed uh, Isaac. You know, multiplied his crops, multiplied his animals, multiplied his servants, and God blessed him and blessed him. And at some point in his life, he just took it all for granted. At some point in his life, he probably said, I deserve this. Well, he didn't deserve any of it. Just as none of us really deserve God's grace in our lives. It's, it's His grace, His love towards us. And so Isaac, you see, made a great start, but a sad finish. And we're going to see that because as he uh, continued to grow and to, to grow older, uh, we see he took advantage of God's grace. We see he took advantage of the blessings and there were serious consequences because of what he did. And we'll see uh, some of the things he did and some of the consequences. But at this point, we have a warning in Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews. Uh, a Hebrew author who's a believer in the New Testament. And he warns us all, watch out brothers. And of course that's generic in the Greek text. Watch out brothers, Adelphoi. Brothers and sisters, so that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that departs from the living God. In a sense, uh, we see that happening in Isaac's life as he grew older. And it led to all kinds of problems. And it can happen to us, even though we're believers. And so the author of Hebrews is warning here against an unbelieving heart that departs from the living God but encourage each other daily. And there, of course, he's talking to believers. Encourage each other daily while it's still called today so that none of you is hardened by sin's what? Deception. What was Jacob's downfall? Deception. He had a deceptive, manipulative personality. And it impacted him, it impacted his father, impacted his mother, and certainly impacted his brother. And so we see deception, sin's deception in this situation. Question is, how can we keep the process of time? See, that's a key point here. How can we keep the process of time and the influence of the world? The process of time plus what? The influence of the world over that process of time. How can we keep that from blurring and even obliterating our most significant memories of God's grace and blessing. The fact of the matter is, when things are going well, like it was with Isaac, when God was multiplying all that he had, he just took for granted this grace, took for granted this blessing from God, and really, in many respects, departed from the living God. Not literally, in the sense of his relationship and salvation, but certainly in relationship the way he lived his life. So we need to beware of, of this tendency. Uh, we see later this happening to King Saul. We see it happening to King Solomon. Made a great start. Bad finish. There's no guarantee if you make a great start, you're going to finish well. But we have safeguards. And that's what this principle is all about. We should develop 
continually our intimate relationship with God, not allowing our hearts to gradually grow cold and insensitive towards our Heavenly Father, our families, and our fellow believers. And how do we practice that principle? Well, look, let me just review again for you Hebrews chapter 3. We just read about it. Here's a principle that comes from this passage. If we profess to be Christ followers, we should test the reality of our faith by honestly evaluating how we live. That's the first thing we ought to do. But notice, once we know that we are true believers, if you look at this passage I shared with you earlier, you have a key right in the center of that passage. How do you keep on the right track? You encourage each other daily. You see, the process of time involves day after day after day after day, month after month after month, year after year after year. And God knows that we need encouragement daily to do what? To walk with God, not to forget God's blessings. We need each other, and that's what the body of Jesus Christ is all about. And God gives us a wonderful answer in many respects in this passage of Scripture.